वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर अनीता भेला फ्रॉम द यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ डेली एंड टूडे वी विल बी डूइंग द मॉड्यूल मैथ्यू आनंद एज अ कल्चर क्रिटिक दिस मॉड्यूल हैज बीन प्रिपेयर बाय डॉक्टर विनीता गुप्ता चतुर्वेदी ऑल्सो फ्रॉम द यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ डेली You know that Matthew Arnold is well known as a poet and a social and literary critic. He set by great value towards poets and as also towards critics. Today we will study about his ideas of culture and how he thought culture could be imbibed by society and that it could contribute to the improvement of the morals of people we cannot know about an author without knowing something about his or her, or her life or about the times in which he or she lived matthew arnold was born in 1822 this was the period when great changes were taking place it was also a time of great incertitude why because there were many advancements in science that were taking place there was capitalism and also industrialization and all these had a great impact on the religious beliefs of the people anand lived in this time of great incertitude and he believed that in some ways it might be possible for culture to substitute to act as a substitute to religion in his personal life he was influenced by a number of people the first influences as we all know are of our parents his mother was extremely poetic and emotional and he inherited his emotional and poetic side from her his father was an educationist and had studied a lot and had great knowledge and he was pragmatic and liberal and also had high standard of moral values so arnold imbibed all these from his father he had his education at rugby where he made friends with arthur and his friend arthur influenced him a great deal especially in his ideas about the paucity of poets in the present day england as also the paucity of good writing at oxford he uh, sp- spent a lot of time studying history and literature and philosophy and he was influenced by edmund burke's philosophy and the ideas of thomas carlyle he became an inspector of schools for some time but it was a task which was not very interesting and so during that time he spent much of his time writing his expressing himself about ideas on society on uh, and he wrote about social and religious issues he later on toured america and delivered lectures on poetry and education he died of a heart attack in 1888 let us have a look at the published works of matthew arnold in 1849 came out his book, first book of poetry titled the strayed revelers in 1852 
he published his second volume of poems, Empedocles on Etna and Other Poems. In 1853, he republished his group of poems, but he excluded Empedocles from this uh, collection. Why and for what reasons he did this, we will come to a little later. In 1854, he published his group of poems, second series, and then in 1865, he published Essays in Criticism, first series. In 1869, came out his book Culture and Anarchy, and in 1873, Literature and Dogma. In his later years, he returned to the writing of criticism and in 1869 came out his last and final publication that was the Essays in Criticism second series. Every man is influenced by certain writers and certain thoughts. As I said earlier, his friend Arthur Hugh influenced him a great deal. He was he had some ideas about the current situation in England regarding literature. And he believed that good poetry and good writers were missing in England. He was also, also influenced by the Romantic poets, John Keats and William Wordsworth. Although he was not very happy with William Wordsworth's lack of reading the philosopher Edmund Burke and his social thought also influenced him a great deal. As I said earlier that this was a time of great incertitude, Arnold talked about the aristocracy whom he called the barbarians. Arnold talked about the Philistines, that is the commercial middle classes, who were hankering after money and he also talks about the general populace. He believed that the aristocracy were, seemed to be a law unto themselves whereas the Philistines that is the commercial middle class did not value good ideas and good beliefs and were emphasizing individualism. The general populace too, he felt, lacked refinement and taste. In view of the conditions prevailing at his time, he felt that society was moving towards anarchy because religion was losing its place in society. And he posits as an alternative to religion, culture and tradition. Literary critics have divided his career into three phases. The first or the early phase culminated in his, es in his essays in criticism first series. Then came the middle phase say between 1860 to 1875 and during this time Arnold devoted himself to writing on social, political and religious issues. And in his third and last phase he returned to the writing of literary criticism which culminated in the publication of his essays in criticism second series in 1888. Arnold gave a great deal of importance to culture in life. What do we mean by culture? We all have a different apprehension of what culture is. For Arnold, culture was something that dealt with the best that has been thought and known in the world. It meant the spread of good and moral ideas. And this spread of good and moral ideas 
he believed could serve as a civilizing force in society who would be the repositories of this culture or who could be the repositories of this culture arnold felt that both the critic and the poet can be the repositories of this culture he assigned a very important role to the critic in society he felt that the critic could serve as a moral figure in society he could influence people through his ideas he could propagate good ideas and he could be a teacher and a educator of the masses how can the critic do that the critic has to be learned he has to be have lot of knowledge he must be aware of he must have read history philosophy literature and he should have the ability to sift the good and the bad and once he has known what is good and best in the world then he can propagate that as i mentioned earlier he felt that literature of his time especially in england was not of a good standard and he gave reasons for this he felt that the creative faculty in order to flourish needs to combine the power of the man with the power of the moment and if one or the other is missing creativity cannot flourish on the other hand the critic has full control over both man and moment and in this way he gave greater importance to the critical faculty over the creative in his preface to the 1853 poem on and links the culture to the arts and as i mentioned earlier he talks about the materialistic culture prevailing in a society he mentions the lack of morals and the lack of the prevalence of good ideas in this society in this particular preface he also gives us the reasons why he drops empedocles on etna from the group of poems anand believed that literature should have a distinct purpose in mind it should influence and it should enthusiasm and it should inspirit the reader he felt that his poem empedocles was full of suffering was full of suffering that seems to have no end that seems to find no response in action that does not it does not seem to enthusiasm the reader and he felt that this kind of literature was something not worth reading by the general public he felt that action was important he felt that a work of literature should not only influence the reader but it should influence the reader in such a way that it brings about in the reader something it stirs the reader it brings about some kind of great passion rouses him to enthusiasm why because literature then does not remain confined to the reader the reader in turn inspirits society through his enthusiasm and if it does not enthuse him then he too cannot enthuse society 
to go back to Sydney, we all know that Sydney said that literature's purpose was to teach and to delight. Arnold follows in his footsteps, saying that the aim of art is to give pleasure. That art should not just interest the reader, but should also inspirit him. That art should serve a moral purpose. It should refine the reader and it should rejuvenate the reader. Arnold, like Sidney, too, wants that for the modern poets, the classics should serve as their models. Why? Because they represent great and noble characters like Prometheus, like Achilles. The action presented in these stories is great. The personages are noble and the situations are very intense. Arnold talks about the elementary emotions and he feels that these writers dealt with the elementary emotions that are independent of time. If you know something about Natya Shastra, then you will realize that Bharat in his Natya Shastra also talks about permanent emotions and transitory feelings. And he feels that uh, the permanent feelings remain, you know, in a hidden, embedded state within us and can always be roused. And when these emotions, these permanent emotions are aroused, they bring about a desirable effect on the reader. And these moral effects can then influence society in general. Again and again, Arnold emphasizes the importance of culture in human life. He believes that culture is the, can serve as the main civilizing force in society and that both the critic as well as the poet have a duty towards society. They need to educate the public. They need to become teachers who will influence society and make it more moral. Arnold believe that if a writer or a critic, especially a critic, follows some particular political ideology, then it is very difficult for him to be disinterested, for him to be able to see something objectively, because he will always be influenced by his ideology. Therefore, he propagated the idea of disinterestedness. Through this idea of disinterestedness, Arnold placed the critic in a much higher position than the creative writer. He felt that because the critic can see things objectively, therefore he has, he possesses the ability to see the object in itself as it really is. And by seeing the object in itself as it is really is, the critic can know about the best ideas. He can arrive at a judgment of what is good and best. And once he knows what is good and the best, then he can inculcate or spread these ideas so that they prevail in society. And when good ideas prevail in society, then it is that, then it's the time when creativity can flow. 
and that is the time when great epochs of literature are created people might say that shakespeare was not very learned or nor were the greek classical poets but he defends them on the ground that during their time great and moral ideas prevailed in society and therefore that lack of learning was not a disadvantage for them how can the critic become a social benefactor anil says that how do you he asks how anyone can acquire you know refinement in taste he believes that it can be only done through knowing and through reading the culture of reading of knowledge of education must be inculcated and it is only when people read that they can bring about a change in society that they can have a look into themselves and they can change themselves and they can let good culture prevail it is in these societies that because of the throbbing vibrant dynamic reading culture that prevails that literary epochs are created anand's ideas on culture and anarchy are best expressed in his prose work culture and anarchy in culture and anarchy he decries the prevalent state of affairs in his own country he indicts the spread of material culture and influence he indicts the aristocracy for being a law unto themselves he decries the uneducated middle classes for their emphasis on personal liberty for their emphasis on the pursuit of material culture and for their emphasis on mammon he felt that this kind of philistinism could be defeated through culture culture he felt can be cultivated through a focus on curiosity the desire to know must be inculcated the desire to know what is good is important and he felt that the cultivation of this culture could bring about beauty and intelligence and serve society he felt that this idea of beauty and intelligence was best presented by the greeks and the ideas that the greek classical writers propagated should be emulated by english writers he put a lot of store by the virtues of sweetness and light today we might have some objections to arnold's theories today when we question even the idea of who is to decide what is right and wrong arnold's ideas on culture as a social panacea may appear slightly untenable to us we may also criticize arnold for his subjective standards because we really cannot say how he measures the worth of poetry art and culture he does not tell us he only gives examples yet he has an important place in the history of literary criticism and he was able to influence a number of the 20th century writers w b yeats t s eliot and f r lewis came under his influence t s eliot did not agree with everything that arnold had to say especially the idea that culture could replace religion yet 
Elliot was in agreement with him regarding the importance of literature that is moral in tone. Let us sum up what we have learnt today. We know that Arnold tried to create a balance between religion and science. He was worried about the decline of religion in his own age and he was also worried about the spread of material culture. He believed that in such a situation, culture could work as a social panacea for the ills prevailing in society. We know that he placed the critical faculty over and above the creative faculty. He felt that a critic had the ability to see the object as it really is. And through his objective analysis, he could arrive at an understanding of what is best known and thought in the world. And once he has acquired that knowledge, he can propagate it in society. He puts an importance on the classical writers and he believes that they should be emulated because they embed in themselves great action and great thought. He felt that the general public needed to be educated and he felt that it could be done through curiosity and through the knowledge of culture. Arnold believed that culture meant the inculcation of the ideas of beauty, of sweetness and of light. We may quarrel with some of his ideas, but yet we cannot ignore Arnold's views which still have relevance today. For more information, you may go to the e-text. Thank you.